and a very warm welcome to the United Debate Show. On an ideal weekend for Manchester United, the Reds going top of the Premier League, courtesy of a late winner from Dimitar Berbatov. We'll be discussing that dramatic victory at Bolton and also looking ahead to the Carling Cup semi-final second leg against Derby County. Well, joining me this week to discuss all the issues are ex-United man Clayton Blackmore and Daily Mirror journalist David McDonnell. You're both very welcome to the show. David, uh, you were at the Reebok on Saturday. A deserved win, albeit a late one? Yeah, absolutely deserved. I mean, United were at, were at Bolton you know, for, for most of the game and Bolton put so many men behind the ball. And it was you know, a reward for, for United's persistence. I mean, how many times have we seen you know, late, late goals from United? It's, it's not a fluke, as, as Michael Carrick said afterwards. You know, people say it's lucky, but it's not, not luck. It's just a you know, reward for their persistence and their endeavour. And a deserved win, certainly. And a significant result, really, with Liverpool playing tonight against Everton. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that, that was what Alex was saying and, and all the United players were saying, that it was, it was crucial to get past Liverpool and put the pressure on them. I mean, tonight we'll see the full impact of, of United's win because Liverpool now, for the first time, are playing catch-up. So it's a huge, huge win in that respect. What, what about the fact that a few weeks ago United were sort of eight, nine <coughs> points behind Liverpool and suddenly that gap has not only gone but then turned around. That must be big psychological damage to Liverpool, mustn't it? Yeah, I think, uh, especially Rafa and the play, you know, they. I mean, myself, I thought, you know, it's going to be at least the end of February before we catch up. You know, we, had, we went to Japan and the boys did really well over there, come back world champions. But, you know, the, the other teams dropped points that week and that was a really big week, I think, in the league. And then you come back this week was a really big uh, week. We've had three really tough games and, uh, it's, and the clean sheets, you know, the, the defensive... They're, they're showing how good the squad is, really, what we've got. You know, we've got Rio. We've, I think yesterday we had five players who played in the Champions League final weren't weren't available through injury, mm. and uh, they've come through with a really. It was a tough test. Bolton been probably working all week, getting ready for us, and we had a big game in midweek against Wigan, and uh, I think they we were the best team on the day. We didn't really make as many chances as we could have, but um, you know it, it's just down to a little bit of tiredness. And uh, maybe the rest, the manager give uh, Tevez. He had that little bit of sharpness in the last minute. Mm. You, you mentioned the, the well. You mentioned the clean sheet. It's, it's what ten Premier League games in a row that the Premier League equaling record and done without the same back five. I mean, yeah. you know, so many changes. That does say a lot about United's yeah. depth, doesn't it? I think that's that, that's the most impressive sort of aspect of, of that record. I mean, Chelsea obviously hold the record with United at ten clean sheets, but obviously that was done with their regular. Yeah, uh, back four, <coughs> back five, back five, even yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but, but United have had a chop and change. Obviously, Evra being out for four games, you know, Neville and, and Raphael switching, and obviously Rio being injured with his with his back problems, and Johnny Evans has had to come in, and and so in, in that sense, the, the achievement's that much more impressive. I mean, I, I've been hugely impressed with Johnny Evans. I mean, we, we were talking about him you know, before we came on air. I mean, he's been a revelation. You know, he's, he's come in, he's yeah. he's so assured and so calm, and he reads the game so well. Uh, I, I don't think even Alex probably would have, would have expected him to have just slotted in as, as easily as he, as he has done next to Nemanja. But, I mean, he's been fantastic. You know, a good defender when you see one. How, well, how highly do you rate Johnny Evans? Yeah, well, he's proved it. You know, we've, he's playing against the best teams in, uh, you know, in the Premiership. Chelsea, second best team in the world last year, probably. And, uh, you know, he's come through with flying colours, albeit, I think, Drogba wasn't at his best the other week. I don't think he, was t he didn't look too happy with his body language, but... You know, you've, you're playing against the best teams, and he's, he's defended really well. You know, he's, I think the, the surprising thing for me is he's really quick. He's a lot mm. quicker than I thought he was, but he reads the game well, and he's, he's decent on the ball as well. You know, he's, he's got a really bright future in front of him. And of course, one of the things you know, that Alex has is that ability to take two or three out, put two or three in, as he's having to do. Yeah. I mean, let, you know, it seems strange to be talking about Gary Neville in that context, but mm. suddenly he comes back, and, and, and obviously it's like he's never been away. Well, yeah, I mean, Alex always said at the start of, of January, he said they've got eight games this month, and this is the crucial, crucial month in terms of the, of, of the league, you know, getting back into the title race. And he said at the outset that he would have to use all 23 players at his disposal. They'd all play their part, and we're seeing that, obviously, with the league and, of course, the other Carling Cup tomorrow against Derby and FA Cup against Spurs. I mean, he'll use the whole the pool at his disposal, and that's and that's a mark of a great side. Mm. How would you assess Cristiano Ronaldo's form at the moment? Are we expecting <coughs> too much, you know, as observers of football because he did so well last season? Yeah, I think that's uh, spot on, really. You know, every you know, forty-three goals last year. Um, for me, it was a perfect season. I've never seen anybody have a season like that, and I don't think he'd be, I'd be surprised if I seen somebody having a, a season like that again. You know, and we were taking him off for 15 minutes to go. He could have scored a lot more goals, probably. Teams are very, you know, when they get tired, that's when he comes into his own. And uh, I think at the moment, he's, he obviously he's had an operation earlier on in the season, and I think 
people expect him. Once he's playing out there and he's looking like his normal self, but for me, he's not looked as self. He's not doing as many tricks, and it looks like he's feeling his way back in. And I, th I think in the next few weeks, when the Champions League starts up, he's probably just in time. He, he could be back to uh, as good as he was last season. I, mean, I, I was surprised, that, I think Clayton was saying as well, we were surprised that Alex didn't rest him at the weekend because he's played so many yeah. games since he came back from injury, and, and that seems to be taking its toll. I think his last league yeah. goal was... was it, yeah, 11, it's over 12, 10. Yeah. It's nine games in the league, I think. It's yeah. about 10, I mean, 11 it's, now. You know, for a player who gets into that many <coughs> scoring positions and with that attacking threat, that's, that's a, long, mm. you know, a long sort of drought, as it were. But we're surprised he didn't rest him. But I think, as Clayton says, once you know, the, the next few games come around, you know, maybe he'll get a rest, you know, obviously get a rest tomorrow against Derby. He'll probably leave him out against Spurs. And then maybe we'll see the real Cristiano, you know, fully refreshed. Mm. I mean, you know, myself uh, and, and you, David, we're in, we're in a media, that's where we're, we're always looking for stories and angles. Perhaps the Real Madrid saga last summer may have had a psychological effect. Do you think that might play a part? Possibly. I mean, I, I, think, I think, I mean, certainly I was in Zurich last Monday when, when uh, mm. Ronaldo got the award, you know, the, the FIFA World Player of the Year award. Uh, and he was basically, I, I spoke to him on the phone the next day, we did, did an interview. And he was, you know, saying, look, you know, I want to stay at this club at United. I want to, you know, be here for, for the years to come. You know, he can see a side that can dominate for years to come, both domestically and in Europe. You know, you've got Ronaldo's only 23, Rooney's only 23, you know, mm -hmm. Nanny, Anderson, Johnny Evans, who we talked about, is 21. I mean, there's a group of young players, you know, who can, who can really form the, the, the basis of, of this United team for, for the next five, six, seven, eight years. I also think, as well, it's tempered by the fact that Real Madrid are in some sort of, not, not so much disarray, but they're 12 points, I think it is, behind mm. Barcelona yeah. as well. And I think he's <coughs> looking at the, at the instability there. They've got a new manager again, obviously, in, in Ramos. Mm. And I think you know, Cristiano's probably looking at the situation and thinking, well, hang on, maybe, maybe I'm better off where I am here. You know, right, why, why jump ship mm. to, a, to a club that could, that, that's in constant turmoil mm. you know, from one that's, that's going places? And it is fascinating, isn't it? United have had so many 1 0 wins. I mean, we associate United with a sort of <coughs> cavalier 3 yeah. 4 5 0 <coughs> wins, but I, I mean, wins are win, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, the pr problem is it, it gives us heart attacks. Being fans <laughs> and uh, the management will be having kittens and all that, you know, uh, we're, we're keeping it, you know, it's a tough game. Any, if, we, if you're only 1 0 up, anything could happen a free kick, a bad decision, uh, you know, and the game's a draw. But. I think, like we said, the, the defence is probably down to the defence this year. Where last year it was the strikers, this year the defence, 10 clean sheets. And like Gary Neville said the other day, we only need to score one goal now mm. to win a game because we're keeping clean sheets. But like I said, I think I'm sure it's only a matter of time. Ronaldo's getting into the positions, and I think once he scores a goal or a couple of goals, that'll start the ball rolling again for him. Mm. I think that's the difference between United and Liverpool this season, isn't it? I mean, Liverpool have had, I think it's five nil-nil you know, draws mm. against teams, that, I think it was twice against Stoke, yes. uh, West Ham, <coughs> I think, uh, Fulham, I think the other one, other one was against. Yes. Yeah. Whereas those are the games that United, you yeah. know, are going to eke out a one-nil win. They're going to get that goal. They're going to go right to the end and get that goal. And, and that, come the end of the season, is different between champions and challengers, really. Mm. And, of course, the other thing about, about United at the moment is, is, let's take Saturday, on comes skulls and gigs, you know, to yeah. make a significant impact. I mean, they're, they're the kind of players, if you can have the luxury of keeping them on the bench, that can make such a difference, can't they? Yeah, they do. I mean, it's, you know, you need them in your squad. I mean, people say, no, they're too old, no, they should go. But you need people with experience so they can let the, the young lads know what, what they should be doing, you know, and even just through the training sessions and that. And uh, it's great to bring on somebody like Ryan with 20 minutes to go. I mean, he's so, when he's fresh and everybody else is a bit tired... Mm. He's still unplayable now. He proved that when he played against Chelsea. He's played against the second best team in Europe mm. uh, last Sunday, and he was the best player on the field in midfield. You know, he's he's got that something special that not many players have got. Mm. Yeah, and of course, the other thing about Ryan Giggs, I mean, he's getting closer to this record of appearances and the number, you know, number of times he could play for United. One club men, they seem fewer and fewer. And United are yeah. going to have two or three, aren't they, by the end of their career? Skulls and Neville and, and Giggs. Giggs. Yeah, I think, it says I think, a lot. I think Ryan's on, I think, about <laughs> seven, eight, five. I think he's he already is. got the record. He's, 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 he's set yeah, in the yeah, record yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He's got seven, eight, five, and he's obviously yeah. you know, passed Bobby Charlton's record in, mm, in, in yeah. Moscow. Mm. Um, and I think he's 15 or so short of the 800 mark. I mean, mm. I, I can see him going on for another season. I mean, certainly oh, yeah, the, all, the, all the indications Definitely. we've had is that he'll get a new deal. I think his contract runs out at the end of this season, but... There's, there's no, I think, you know, Ryan being Ryan Giggs, you know, th as long as he wants to play for United, as yeah. long as he can play for United, mm. th there'll, there'll be a place for him, certainly. Now, of course, you know, you, you think about the fact that there are so many sort of one club men among the United <coughs> setup, and, uh, you know, you can just put John O'Shea into the category as well. I mean, the reason that they stay there is that there is this settled feeling about 
the way Sir Alex Ferguson has, yeah. has sort of managed his squad over the years. Yeah, I think it's it's the family thing again. You know, it's you, you feel like you're part of a family there. It's not just like a, a football team and a squad. And it's like you're looking around at other players who are just they're moving from one, two or three years here and then they're off for another paycheck. And uh, you know, <clears throat> it's like that's why I think Ronaldo will stay. He enjoys the environment, the players. The only the only bad thing is we get a little bit of rain here, but you know, they, get, they get a bit of rain in Spain as well, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's mainly on the plane, <laughs> on the plane I think I it goes. Uh, they all say. The uh, but uh, when you look at United now, the uh, top of the league, uh, semi final of the Carling Cup, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, still just wondering, with a couple of weeks of the transfer window, it's not going to be in an addition, is there? I think that. No? Well, no, I'm, I'm not sure. No, um, you think there might it be? was whispers at, with Palacios, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think we need. I don't think we need anybody. But uh, you know, we've the boys have proved it <clears throat> in the last six weeks. They've had so many tough games. Um, they've had a big trip abroad, and then they've had some really tricky games when they've come back. The Stoke game was probably one of the trickiest ones. And then this week, you know, if you if you'd have said we're playing those three games in six days, mm. you'd have been happy. Probably taking. Four, six points would have been great, but mm. nine points, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's a great performance from the lads. Up. Whispers about United, maybe, before the end of the transfer window? I think, well, I think as Clayton said, I mean, Palacios and I think Valencia as well from, from Wigan were on United's radar last summer, and certainly they have been tracking them. We, we, we know that for a fact. But I think Alex has ruled out any, any transfer activity you know, this month. And United rarely do any business in January. Obviously, they did Village mm. over a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. Um, Andy Cole came in January, Saha came, you know, mm. I mean, but it's, it's rare, it's very rare for them to do business at, at this time of year. I think he's happy with his squad, I think, <coughs> you know, obviously he's got the two Serbs who've come in, Tosic, yes. probably won't see him play until, until February, mm. but I think he's happy with the squad, as Clayton said, it's, yeah. it, you know, the, the squad are doing the job, so why, why, why mess with it, really? OK, thanks for the moment, gents, that's the end of part one, after the break we're discussing all the games to come in the next few weeks, but uh, join us for that. Welcome back to part two of the United Debate Show with Clayton Blackmore alongside me, former United player, of course, and uh, Mirror journalist David McDonnell. Well, in part one, we're discussing Bolton and, and the Premier League. Let, let's turn our attention to the Carling Cup, uh, the second leg against Derby, trailing, of course, from the first leg. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, Sir Alex Ferguson would quite like to win this tournament. So oh, should we expect United to be... Uh, shall we say, coming out straight from the traps tomorrow evening? Well, absolutely. I mean, they've got to overturn the, the one-goal deficit. I mean, let's be honest, they didn't play well at all in the first leg, and I think the, the Nigel Clough factor had, might have something to do with Derby's performance. You know, obviously he was, wasn't in charge <coughs> of that game, but he was in the stand, and the, the whole crowd and the, everyone there was up for it. And Derby deserved the win. It was a great goal. They defended well. United didn't really do much in terms of attacking. Uh, and he had, the, he had the big guns, you know, Rooney Ronaldo on the bench and brought them on, and they couldn't, they couldn't get an equaliser. I think he'll, he'll have those two on the bench, you know, in, in reserve tomorrow night, certainly, but stick with the same team, because that's been his policy throughout the competition, mm. to play, you know, give the youngsters and the kind of fringe players their chance. So, you know, tomorrow night is a big, big opportunity for them to, to prove themselves. How, how do you think Sir Alex views the Carling Cup? I mean, obviously, as he gets nearer to Wembley, it becomes a very serious proposition, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't think it's top of his list, you know. I think there could have been seven or eight trophies we could have won this year, but, uh, you know, I think when you get to a semi-final, everybody, the players, even the fans, you know, they, they, you start thinking, you know, it's nice to go to Wembley and have a little trip down there. And, uh, you know, we're one down, but we, we'd have had to win at home if it was a if it was a one-leg game at home. We've, you know, you've got to win at home, so... I'd expect us to score tonight, uh, tomorrow night, and uh, but I can see it being a very similar team that played down in Derby. You know, they they were really up for it, and they always teams like that will always be up for it mm -hmm. against United. And it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if the result they had at the weekend was because they were taking it easy because they've got another game against United on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be good for Nigel to know that, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit. I mean, what it, let, let, let's talk generally about the Carling Cup. What, what is the view, do you think, of the Carling Cup now? It, it has its place for sure, but do the fact that so many predators of the top clubs use it as an opportunity to blood younger players, do you think that's a good thing in a way? Or do you yeah, think absolutely. That I mean, I mean where, where else do they get that experience, that competitive yeah. first-team experience? I mean, Alex has always said, though, his, his, his motto has been, you know, if you win one trophy a season, then that's, that's a fantastic achievement. And, you know, it's so hard to win the Premier League or the European Cup or the FA Cup. Win. Exactly, there's only a few, few competitions to win. So I think he takes it very seriously. I mean, his record in it isn't that great. I think, it's, I think he's won it twice, I think. But, I mean, yeah. so it's obviously not... 
top, top of the, the priority list. list, but it is a competition, and it's, a, it's you know players want to play at Wembley, players want to win a trophy, so I, I don't think it should be you know denigrated really. Mm. And of course, you mentioned it's a Wembley final. United won against Wigan, of course, a, a couple of years ago, and uh, I always remember Wayne Rooney's reaction afterwards. Uh, was that was that his first trophy? I think it might well have yeah. been. And uh, you know, there are meaningful <clears throat> aspects to to any. Cup victory, isn't it? Yeah, well, they've, I mean, they're the World Club champions. They've won some. They've won a few things already this year, and uh, you know, when, once you get to Wembley, it's, it doesn't matter what competition there is. They'll want to win it, and uh, you know, I think tomorrow night they'll be working just as hard, and they always do. United players. I mean, we were brought. You brought up one way. Every game's, you know, it's a cup final, and teams usually treat it. That's why it's always a tough game. That's what I mean. I think Derby. I've spoke to players who've left the club and gone to another club, and players are looking two weeks ahead. Or oh, we've got Man U coming up. Mm. And they, they concentrate more on that before the game. You know, they've got two or three games before that. Mm. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, why Derby got didn't play so well in mid, uh, at the weekend. And of course, the added incentive is is the, the quadruple. You know, I mean, it's it's still on. I mean, it's it's a uh, yes. it's it's extremely tough, and no one's ever done it before. But I mean, it's, it's it's there to be there to be achieved. And I think also, if you're to win the Carling Cup for United, it would be a huge. You know, momentum. You know, give them a huge momentum for the rest yeah. of the season. You know, they'd go bouncing into the rest of the league games, the European games, and so it can have a knock-on effect, certainly. Yeah. Mm. And it's sort of sandwiched in between the two legs of the Inter Milan, the final. I'm talking about, sort of sandwiched in between the two legs against Inter Milan. Um, I mean, is it how difficult is it as a player to keep getting up to a level you need to for such for such big games? Well, I mean, that's. I mean, I think. I mean, even at Liverpool and you know Arsenal, I mean, you've got to get up for every game there. I mean, if You've got a club. We've got seventy-five thousand watching us every, you know, every home game, and you've got to get up and play, you know, because you know the opposition are going to raise their game. They always raise the game. They make it really difficult, and it's like Bolton the other day. They, you know, they they didn't really cause us a lot of threat, but you know, they nearly got a result out of it just from hard work and doing the nasty things, closing down, making it hard for us to play. Mm. That, it's it's much easier to close people down and make it hard to play than trying to break a team down. Mm. Of course, it's, let's not forget it's a big cup week. Of course, the FA Cup as well, uh, and Tottenham in town. Um, I guess, although it's with a different team, uh, Harry Redknapp bringing a, a team to Old Trafford a year ago, or just yeah. under yeah. a year ago, he, he did the same with Portsmouth and came away with a win. Uh, that'll be in the back of Sir Alex's yeah. mind, won't well, of course, it? Because he, he also beat Alex at uh, Old Trafford with West Ham, didn't he? The famous yeah, Barthes, you know, yeah. with the hand up for the offside. So yeah, I mean, it's a huge game. I mean, the FA Cup is obviously a more important trophy for United than than, than the League Cup and the history and significance of it. I mean, I, I was saying earlier that I think he might rest Ronaldo. Clayton d disagrees, but I think you know, it, he'll certainly play a strong side. Certainly, whether or not he, he, he leaves Ronaldo out is a moot point. But I think he'll play a strong side because there's a competition. You're up against a Premier League opposition, you, you've got to win. And to do that, you know, Spurs, you know, a resurgent under Harry Wright, they've had a bit of a dip recently. But I mean, they, they're going to play their strongest side, they're going to come there, you know, attacking. You know, that's the way Harry's teams play, they come out and they attack. So it, I think it'll be an open game. Um, and I think certainly Alex will feel that the strongest possible side at his disposal. There always seems to be a very good atmosphere at Old Trafford because mm. you're allowed to a certain larger section for the visiting supporters. Um, there's a good atmosphere on FA Cup days at Old Trafford, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's got a great uh, history, and uh, I think every if you ask any any kid when you when you're a young lad, that's what you want to do. You want to go to Wembley and play in the FA Cup final, and uh, you know I've done, I've been lucky enough to do it myself, and it is it's fantastic. And you know, I mean, the, the manager I think will have his strongest team out on at the weekend, as well, barring injuries in in tomorrow's game. Um, I think the good thing for us is I think Spurs play on Wednesday, isn't mm, it? Yeah. Mm, so Burnley, I mean, yeah. but the, the yeah. thing is for them as well, they, if they're going to they should get through the four one up against Burnley, so they're already in the cup final. So hopefully we'll be we'll be in the same position as them. But then you know that two days they've only got two days to recover from the Wednesday game that could play into our hands a wee bit. It's mm. usually the other way around. We're usually playing on a Wednesday and we've got to play on a Saturday, which happened last week and we came through that with flying colours. So hopefully it might that might just come into a Help us out this week. It's always played a big part in Sir Alex's career, the FA Cup, hasn't it? I, I always yeah. get the impression that that it's a competition that, that he almost, you know, he, he remembers what a significant part it's played in his career. Well, he's won it five times, hasn't he? Mm. I mean, it's, so I mean, that that's, that, that says everything about how important it is to him. I mean, I remember a few years ago when they lost to Arsenal in the in the final, having totally outplayed them, mm. and Arsenal were clearly, I think they were without Burkamp at the time, yeah. and they played a formation that that was just designed to get through extra time and get to penalties. I mean. Rooney hit the post. You know, yeah. it was just it was travesty that United lost, and I haven't seen Alex as furious as that. <laughs> you know, I've seen him furious many times before. But I mean, that that showed how much how much it meant to him. You know, it, people talk about the, the, 
the, the Premier League and the Champions League being all, you know, all encompassing and the, the be all and end all. But the FA Cup still has a special place in the hearts of you know, managers, players, and fans, and everybody, really. Mm. And of course, the other thing about it is I, I imagine there's almost a different team in his mind for each different competition, isn't there? Well, I mean, I think I mean, the, the manager's the only one who can gauge that because of uh, what, happens, what happens tomorrow night in that game. Then in the next couple of days in training, he'll have a look at the players and see who looks tired or who looks like they need a rest and uh, who's looking very sharp. So it's, it's difficult, and, it, and he can only do that from day to day and watching the lads in training. So I'm sure he'll make the right decision. He yeah. usually does. Yeah, absolutely. I think the most important thing about, about this particular part of the season, uh, we, call, we always call it the business end, is that, OK, Wayne Rooney's got a couple of weeks with a hamstring niggle and Rio Ferdinand got this little back problem that we can't get to the back of uh, at the mm. moment. But significant players seem to be pretty much fit, don't they? Yeah, and, and, and that's when United's experience comes into it at, at this stage of the season. I mean, Liverpool haven't really been in that position you know, for a long, long time in terms of you know, when it comes down to the nip and tuck of, of the run-in and, and, the, and the pressure intensifies and every mistake is magnified, every game is, is you know, so important. Whereas United have been there, and we talked earlier about the, the experience of the likes of Neville, Scholes and Giggs. I mean, they're going to be crucial in, in the next few weeks, and their, their know-how and their, and their experience are going to be crucial to United. I think, you know, look, looking at it from, from that perspective, you know, United have got to be favourites. I mean, it's in, it's in their hands now, obviously, in terms of the games played and the points on the board. So it would be, be interesting to see what, how it develops in recent weeks. Well, what do you make of Chelsea? Uh, I mean, extraordinary events, really, at the end of their game on Saturday to come from behind to win. I mean, I don't suppose United can, can look beyond Chelsea. They can't say that because they beat them, they're out of the race now, can they? No, I mean, Liverpool, uh, Chelsea, even Arsenal, they're not far behind. You know, I mean, the man, I think the managers mentioned it, a lot of teams are going to drop points between now and the end of the season, even ourselves, you know, and... Uh, I mean, the biggest problem we've got, we've got a, we've, we've got, we're in so many competitions. Obviously, we've got the cup final. That could be a big game. That playing at Wembley in between the Inter Milan games, um, <clears throat> it'd be interesting who the manager plays in that game in a cup final. And to be fair, the Inter Milan games are the most important. And mm. uh, you know, he could see a really weakened team put out then mm. for the the cup final if we do get through. Yeah. I mean, right. the, the other, other significant aspect as well of the league campaign is that United, of course, have got all the big, yeah. the big, their, their, their so-called rivals to come to Old Trafford. I mean, Alex made a big issue about the fact that he thought the fixture list was handicapped, and obviously that provoked a response from Rafa. But in reality, it's actually worked to United's advantage because you know it's in their hands now. So, they've got all the teams that, yeah, but in the I, second I mean, half of the campaign to come to Old Trafford, where their record is, as we know, formidable. I think it's only worked in our in our favour because we're winning the games. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's, I mean, that's what I mean. The lads have done fantastic in the last six weeks to, yeah. to win all those games they've won. Yeah. And, um, you know, because I, I know where the manager's coming from. I've seen, for years, it's, you know, we've seemed to play games on a Wednesday and then on a Saturday. Yeah. yeah the other teams are playing on a Sunday. It does, yeah. it does now and again, it goes there, but that's yeah. the TV. The TV want the games on the Saturday. And, uh, you know, that, they like pay I the say. Money. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. They, they pay the money and. Guys, we've got I've to, got to stop you. You see, that's what happens when we're chatting. <laughs> we can't, don't know when to stop. We've got to, I'm afraid. That's the end of this week's United Debate Show. My thanks to Clayton and David. See you next week.